Hey guys, we are here for one more Dollar Tree bag making video. So for this one, you're gonna need four of these dish drying mats. Now, the first time I did this bag, I wasn't intending on making another one, um, and I used the dish drying mats that had um, be a bead print all over them. I can't find them anymore. They're sold out everywhere, but I did find these solid colored ones. It doesn't really matter which ones that you use. Um, they're all about 12 by 18 and they're double sided with the foam in between. So you'll need four of them. You're going to need one for the front, one for the back, and then you're going to need two more. So these two, as you can see by my chalk lines, are gonna be cut apart. So this one's gonna be for the top and the bottom. This one's gonna be for the two sides. And then you have a piece left over that you can probably use to do a pocket on the outside. Although to be honest on this one, because our strapping doesn't exactly match our bag, and I only have gray zipper tape, <laughs> Um, I think we're going to do something fun with the outside pocket and use this old piece of a vintage quilt. Um, I will also talk to you about how to line the bag, although we're not going to do that with this one. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these care instruction tags off and I am going to zigzag on either side of my chalk lines before I cut anything. So let me go do that and I'll be right back. Okay. So that is done. You aren't gonna be able to see it super well because I used this, uh, a similar color thread to the place, the dish drying mat, um, but you can kind of see the indents where the stitching lines are. So I'm gonna cut between those stitching lines on both pieces carefully, hopefully. Decided instead of a regular zigzag to use a stitch on my machine I don't use very much. My my machine did come with like edge finishing stitches. I do have a serger, but I'm not putting all this thick fabric through a serger. But anyway, I used the other stitch on the other machine and it worked well. And this is just to sort of finish the edges because otherwise it's gonna curl over and it's you can see the foam and everything, which is fine, but we just don't want things to unravel and fray like endlessly. So we've got those two. Now let's do these. Then we have more cutting to do before we can assemble anything. More cutting and more edge finishing. Okay, two of these are for the sides of the bag. The other one is extra, so we're gonna set it aside. On these, you need to cut them in half, but we want to continue with our zigzagging of the edges first. So we're going to do here. My Taylor's chalk doesn't want to work well on this fabric. And then we also want to do here that one half of one piece down the middle. And you wanna do that to two of them. And then on one of these long strips, you wanna do it um, lengthwise down the middle. Now, I do like to give myself a chalk line so I have sort of a general guide. And again, this chalk doesn't really wanna write super well, but it does do just well enough so that I can see it. So, more zigzagging and more cutting. I'll be right back. Okay, so now, as with the other pieces, time to cut it apart carefully. You don't wanna cut the stitching that you just did. But if you do, run it through the machine again. So that's the two pieces for the top. These are the sides. Uh, 
Now I did also make a bag out of regular fabric I had in my stash recently. I'll put a picture right about here. It's a slightly different size, but the process for making it was the same way. I will talk to you at the end about how to line the bags if you want to put a lining in it. We're not going to in this one. Um, but if you're going to make one of these bags and you don't want it to be, you don't need it to be 12 by 18. Um, the front and back can be whatever size rectangle or square for that matter that you want them to be. The top and bottom pieces need to be the same length as your front and back pieces. Now I do five or six inches, but you could do three or four. The side pieces need to be the same width as the top and bottom pieces. Now for half of the side piece and half of the top and bottom piece, like the top piece, you're gonna to wanna to split them down the center because what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew them together like this. And that's where the zipper is going to go so that it's going to open on the top and down the sides halfway. And you'll see what I mean when we get there. First things first, <clears throat> I am going to, yeah. Okay. First things first, we're going to sew the bottom piece to the front and the back. Now I am going to sew this so that these kind of zigzagged finished edges are on the inside. Um, again, if you didn't want to be bothered or you don't like the look of that, you could line this. So you're going to want to make two of these bags, one with the zipper that's the outside and one without the zipper that's the inside. So we'll talk about that again at the end. So I'm going to sew this, but I'm going to leave about a half an inch on each end um, unstitched. I'm gonna just stitch in between. It'll make it easier to put the sides on. All right, let me do that, I'll be back. So your piece should look something like that. Then I like to do whatever I'm gonna do to the front and back before I finish assembly. That includes putting on handles, putting on pockets, whatever it is gonna be. So to that end, first we're gonna do handles. Just like my other bag video, which I'll link down below. I'm using this cotton webbing. I almost always use this cotton webbing. And okay, so now just to double check, I'm gonna measure from pin to pin on one handle and pin to pin on the other handle. Hopefully they're the same or close. We'll find out in a second. 29 and a half. This one looks shorter. Because it is shorter. It's only 27 and a half. So keep fiddling with your pins until you're Straps are about the same. Yeah, that's the same, but is it twisted? Huh, yes. <laughs> it's not one thing, it's five other things. Okay, so that's twisted, so let's untwist it. And then we measure it. Measure three times, cut once, right? Or is that a carpenter thing? Might be a carpenter thing. Yep. All right. So we're gonna sew those down. Of course, where this join is right here, I'm gonna put some fray check and I'm also gonna zigzag over it like five million times. That one 
one's not open yet. Uh, for those that don't know, Fray Check is like a fabric glue. Helps prevent the uh, edges from unraveling. That one might be empty. Okay. <laughs> Third time's the charm, maybe? Now that one's clogged. You guys, I'm so well prepared, ha ha ha. There we go. Now if you have your um, webbing is uh, not cotton and it's like poly or something, you can probably um, heat up the edges a little bit to melt them with caution, of course. Um, I prefer not to do that. So before we go to the sewing machine, because I prefer not to have poly webbing anyway. So before we go to the sewing machine, we're gonna look at this pocket. I have this really old piece of quilting that I think if we do that, and sew it to the blue and use that to make our pocket. That would be cute on the front. And it would be less annoying that the strapping is not the same color. Okay, so, and I'm gonna do it all at once, the sewing machine. So what I'm gonna do is lay this like that, put a, couple of pins in it in random places. I'm not even sure you can see that because I'm probably out of the range of the camera. There we go. And then I'm going to turn it over and we're going to trim this. Move about a half an inch or so around the bottom and the two sides. Because we're going to want to turn it under like that. That hurt. Um, yeah, I think I might want to add we're going to cut off a little square like that with this. And I'm thinking that besides putting this here kind of wondering if I use some of this to make a pocket on the inside or wrap around the strap. I think maybe a pocket on the inside. I could do it on this side. If you hear that, that's our grand dog, Lily. She's probably having a nightmare. That way, if this fabric is in more than one place, it'll make kind of more sense. And I always like to have a little pocket on the inside to Stick those small loose bits in so they don't get lost in the bottom of the bag, whether it's my house keys or something else. Okay, so we're gonna sew the straps on and both pockets on, and I'll be right back. Okay, so now the outside, front and back of the bag are done. I decided instead of sewing this top down, I would leave it open because then you have sort of an extra pocket to put things. And we did put the pocket on the inside. I forgot to take the pin out, that's okay. So now we're gonna work on the sides and the top. We're gonna to set this aside for the moment and start assembling this. So the first thing we need to do 
is take the skinny strips and we need to sew one of the short skinny strips to either end of the long ones, like that. Once we get that done, we will put the zipper in. Now I have zipper on a roll. I usually always have zipper on a roll. I just find it convenient because I make bags a lot. Um, the only thing is I have to switch the zipper pulls around because I like to have um, two pulls that are center pull. So I'm gonna fiddle with these zippers. They come with five million zipper pulls, but you can cut it to the length that you need. I'm gonna put all these zipper pulls down at the other end, except for two. Okay. Now we have two, but they're going the same direction. So we're gonna pull them off. Maybe, that one doesn't wanna come off. Okay. There we go. So we want to put one this way. There's videos on how to do this. You don't need to sit here and watch me do this. And it can be a bit fiddly, so don't let it discourage you. Anyway, let me do that. And oh, I got it. So I arranged the zipper pulls so that, whoop, where are we? There we are. You can open it that way. So now we're going to cut, uh, I'm gonna lay these like that. And although this will be slightly too long, that's okay. I'm going to cut it the length of the unsewn pieces plus a tiny bit extra. All right, so we're gonna go to the machine. I'm gonna sew these here and here on the short ends. And then I'm gonna put the zipper in this way. And then these solid pieces go on either end. All right, let me get the zipper in. I'll be back. Okay, believe it or not, we're almost done. So while I was at the machine putting the zipper in, I also sewed our two solid squares, one to either short end. Now you can see that this is a little, sticks out a little bit right here. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's gonna be on the inside and the edges are finished, so it's good. Um, I did, after I put the zipper in, I did stitch back the seam allowance just because that way the zipper won't get caught in the fabric. Um, usually I use Sullivan's heavy duty zipper. This one's okay. Um, I think Sullivan's is a little bit better quality for when you're making bags, but I have this, so we're using that. All right, now push everything out of our way. We get our bag front, outside up, and our top and sides right side down. We're gonna put right sides together. We are. Hopefully you've done the math right and it fits. Speaking mostly to myself, just FYI. <laughs> sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Actually, what I wanna do uh, is put a pin there. There we go. A pin there, and then we have the center of each piece. Uh, match them up and ease in any extra.
you want to spend some time and really play with getting it pinned correctly, it will give you a better finished product. So do that, and you'll notice that I moved this up just a little bit. And then pulled taut. And then did that. Because that seam right there should be close to the top corner. All right, so do that to both sides. And then we're gonna sew all along here on both sides and then turn it right side out. Now, before you do this, don't forget to open your zipper. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to get your bag open and that's gonna be a problem. All right, I'll be Okay, done. the only other thing you might have left to do is to put a tag on it, but now we should be done and we can turn it right side out. So this is what the inside looks like. If you want to add a lining, so you do all of this all over again without the pockets and straps, just the basic bag part and no zipper. Around where the zipper opening is gonna be, fold and press your seam allowance back about a quarter to a half an inch. Make this outside one, make the inside one, um, sandwich them one inside the other and then hand or machine stitch it around the zipper, across the bottom, up the other side, across the bottom, over here. And then you have a lined bag. Now, if you want pockets on the lining, before you do any of that, do like we did with the outside and put pockets on the lining. Okay, now we're gonna turn it right side out and it should resemble sort of a suitcase briefcase shape. I'm really liking these days this shape of bag. Um, Make sure, especially because this one's not lined, to clip all of our threads. Let me see some I missed. So, because it's not lined, we want the inside to be as neat as possible. And the outside. Push all your corners out. Now the corners aren't going to be perfect just because of the bulk of the fabric. They're just not going to look perfect, but that's pretty good. And because it's got foam in it, it stands up. You don't need to put any interfacing or anything in it. I did make a cute um, travel art bag, travel yarn bag, or just like a overnight duffel. It's pretty cute. Anyway, the only other thing to do is maybe put a tag on it and let me see what I have. Okay, there you go. Has a tag on it. Now these tags are not normally what I use on bags, but they're what I have at the moment and they're usually uh, for my crochet. I think it looks pretty good though. Uh, anyway, uh, put the sharp pointy things away. So this turned out pretty cute. I hope it gives you some ideas of what you can do. You know, our art and creativity is not just about making paintings and sewing, clothing. And I mean, you want something to carry your stuff in when you leave the house, or maybe you're just going downstairs or to another room or the back patio. Why can't you have it in a cute bag? Bags are expensive, but you can make it maybe out of what you have or hello, things from the Dollar Tree. I'll link the video I got this idea from down in the video description. She makes a lot of stuff, bags especially from things from Dollar Tree. Go give her a shout out. Oh, not a shout out. Go give her a like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to check out my video description for other relevant links, including ways to support the free content here on YouTube, including my Patreon, my designs over at Art Foamies and Rubber Moon and all of that stuff. And uh, the most important thing, Go out and have a good day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.